Well, you know, uh, my first choice had always been my father. I campaigned for him when I was 11 years old. He's still my first pick. But, you know, now that the nominating process is over, tonight I'm uh, happy to announce that I'm going to be supporting Governor Romney. Alex Jones here with a message to Ron Paul, as well as his son, Senator Rand Paul. I have supported you, Congressman, for 17 years on the air. I've interviewed you more than 200 times. And you have a voting record that is 100% constitutional. And I have supported you because you've been a man of no compromise. There can be no compromise with tyranny and oppression and unconstitutional usurpation of our liberties. You know that. And I watched the last few months in horror, knowing how the delegate process works, as your campaign encouraged your supporters to build up the biggest delegate count they could to supposedly take over the nomination and to now see you come out and say, we're still going, but be respectful. And yes, I can see we won't get enough delegates taking wind out of your own sails and out of our sails. And at the same time, have your son, Senator Rand Paul, come out and with pleasure endorse Mitt Romney. It's painful to watch. What did you expect to happen from this? Well, you're very politically smart. You knew it would blow up in your face. And I have to tell you, I am not going to go down on the Ron Paul ship. If you don't come out and explain yourself to your constituents and supporters, this is going to spread like a cancer through Campaign for Liberty. It's going to be a wedge that the globalist corporatist media can use to drive into the liberty movement. I know you have a lot of mainline advisors you guys have gotten. I know Jesse Benton has brought some of those folks in, but it's time to get back to your roots. Victor Hugo said, no army can stop an idea whose time has come. The idea of restoring the republic has come. You've admitted you're just a focal point of that. Four years ago on my show, you said that half the support you got in your first campaign was from my listeners. Well, my listeners are almost tearing my doors down in anger right now, and they're very, very sad because they believed in you. And it is a compromise to go with politics 101, as I saw one commenter on Infowars.com. That, oh, you expand your base, you make alliances. You can't do it with Mitt Romney because he's been for carbon taxes, abortion, open borders, and helped write Obamacare. You ran campaign ads against him. Serial hypocrites and flip-floppers can't clean up the mess. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message. But only after supporters demanded it. It was clear you were playing nice with him and targeting Santorum during the campaign at the debates. But still, I ignored what my intuition and my political savvy told me. I understand the political idea of expediency and that you've got all this capital politically and that if you don't go try to influence Romney, it's all lost. That's the thing. You're not going to be able to influence Romney. And six months down the road... If he unseats the tyrant Obama, he will continue doing what the very same globalist special interests want. And now your wagon and Rand's wagon is hooked to him. But I met with him recently. I had about a 30-minute meeting with him. One of the big issues is auditing the Fed. We think there needs to be more transparency to the Fed. And this is something that Governor Romney uh, was supportive of. I'm not going to spend my time going after Ben Bernanke. I'm not going to take my, my effort and focus on the Federal Reserve. It's important to have the Fed as an independent agency. I do not think you want to have the, uh, the, the, uh, the Congress of the United States uh, trying to uh, pull strings. Your supporters are intelligent. They're sophisticated compared to mainline Republicans and Democrats. And they understand that. So they're decoupling from you right now. Ron Paul, all the capital you created that you tried to gamble on getting your son on the VP ticket or yourself into the cabinet is blowing up in your face. You need to get ahead of this now. You don't have long and come out and speak directly to your constituents, not in an email, but in a press conference for the world to see or your 30 plus years of fighting tyranny is gonna be seriously damaged. We appreciate the work you've done, your great voting record, being anti-war, being anti-Federal Reserve, anti-globalist, standing up for national sovereignty, standing up against corporate welfare. We know you're a good man. We know Rand's a good man, but you guys have gotten so close to the beltway and you've had such success, you've been catapulted from being a man in the wilderness, Dr. No, to the forefront. You really won Iowa and Maine. You were winning, and the system cheated you so they could put Mitt Romney in, and now you're telling the delegates, go to 
Tampa and be respectful and concede to Romney. There's a major contradiction there. I had listeners hammering me to get behind this delegate operation. And I said, look, maybe Ron Paul knows something I don't, but he's not going to be able to use these delegates because even if he got close to a majority, they're going to point out that Romney won the majority of the states and it's going to be spun as stealing an election. Ron Paul needs to come out against the NDAA, against Obama launching wars without congressional uh, approval and serious treason. He needs to get behind Walter Jones's bill that we had to push Paul to do uh, to impeach Obama for going under UN control and handing over our military to foreign powers. I've seen a lot of signs. A lot of people campaign for liberties bringing in right now. Our Council on Foreign Relations and globalist. Best case scenario, the Ron Paul system, Ron Paul Inc. tried to take over the Republican Party and the opposite is happening. Worst case scenario, they've been listening to some Benedict Arnolds inside and have absolutely fallen into a trap. I'm ashamed that I didn't listen to the voices warning me in the last six months and pointing out this trail of many betrayals that we've been witnessing leading up to this larger betrayal. Ron Paul, you know that tens of millions of Americans have broken their backs out there knocking on doors and making phone calls and donating and giving money and fighting on the internet for you because you were no compromise. And now to engage in old fashioned political merger with Romney and all the things he's done, even if you have a good reason for it, it's not going to sell with your constituents. And to watch you mortally wounding the movement that you helped build is very, very sad. But again, liberty moves forward, people are waking up, it's just that I wanted Campaign for Liberty and your dynasty that you helped create politically to move forward and be even stronger in the future. That's why I encourage Rand when nobody was supporting him to run for the Senate. His first contributions came from my audience in Kentucky. The, the people that first made up his original campaign staff were my listeners who moved from Texas and other areas up there to support you. Then the Republican insiders tried to sabotage you. Then the Democrats did. And later when you beat them, they came to you with a handout and you began to walk down that road with them. It's not too late, Rand, to turn back. It's not too late, Ron, to turn back. Don't destroy yourselves. You have been warned. I live here in the grassroots where the rubber meets the road. And I'm telling you, what you're doing has gone over like a Led Zeppelin. You're going to be betrayed. You're from Washington. You guys claim to be statesmen and not politicians, but you're jumping in bed with some of the most duplicitous, oily people the world has ever seen that are bought and paid for by the big mega banks. It's time to put the chips on the table. The people that made you what you are politically today are all watching, and you're getting a second chance. Don't blow it. From a friend, and a supporter. I'm Alex Jones signing off from the front lines of the Info War, Austin, Texas.